know, what I studied last week, uh, we established the fact that love was the foundation for kingdom service. Therefore, that means that anything that we do as service of God should be characterized by love. So this is very important to understand since God is love and we are created in his image and his likeness, not only that, we are told by God in his word to be imitators of him. So you see how it flows. See, scripture teaches that God is love. But to be clear in this thought, we must have a clear understanding of what love is. Throughout scripture, love is presented as an action. Therefore, it is expressed through some type of physical action. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. Therefore, since we are all created in the image and likeness of God, we must be loved also. <laughs> You have to understand that. We're created in the image and likeness of God. The objective of our study today, what we want to do is, is to help start the process of taking control of our minds so that we can walk in our true identity, which is love. That's what we want to try to accomplish today. We're going to be coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 48. And I want to focus on just that one part about being patient. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It says, Love suffers long and is kind. Love does, love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things. Let the church say amen. amen. As I said, what I want to do is focus on being patient. In verse 1, we are told that love is patient. In the original Greek text, the word carries the meaning of being long-spirited. The Greek word for patience is long-spirited, enduring, long-suffering, suffering long. That's very important, because in all my training, no one has ever put long-suffering with, long-spirited with patience, which changes the whole dynamics of the word in my mind. Because I must admit, up to this point, whenever I heard the word patient, I automatically assumed it meant to uh, remain inactive while I was waiting on something to happen. But no one ever added long spirited in that, which goes back again to understand that we have to be studying the scriptures from the spiritual perspective. Because what the problem is, we're trying to understand spiritual things from a carnal concept. And we miss the meaning that God has for us in his word. You see, enduring, suffering, and forbearing opens up a new train of thought as it pertains to patience in connection with love. Long spirited. What I want to do today is open up this concept of long-spirited and the biblical knowledge needed to come into a full understanding of being patient and what it consists of. Now, I'm going to draw out a process of thought through the Word of God so that you can see its connection with love and why long, understanding the meaning as long-spirited, why it's so important to you in connection with your walk with God. I don't know about you. I may have been the only one that thought patient meant just waiting for something to happen. See, but it's not just waiting. You have to know how to wait. You have to know how to wait. You can be waiting and don't be ready when you get there. If you don't know how to wait. And so you have to ask yourself, are you waiting properly for the Lord to do whatever it is you want him to do in your life? Because if you're not waiting properly, you won't get what you're waiting for because you haven't learned the lesson that way we're supposed to do. And that's very important that we understand that it's always about your spiritual growth and development and everything that we encounter each day will allow that to happen. Which brings us to the first principle we want to work from as we talk about being patient. You must stay true to your identity. 
You must stay true to your identity, long-spirited. You said love is patient, and God is love. That means if you were created in the image of God, you're supposed to be loved also. Because what we've studied up to this point last week, we found that no matter how much you knew, how many gifts you had in your service to people, if you didn't have love, you were nothing. And we want to be something, right? So patience to love is the foundation. Because without this patience, you can't do any of the other characteristics that are going to come up later. So we want to develop that, that frame of thought through the Word of God so that you can actually see it unfold and start to connect the dots based on your knowledge. Because the part of your life is based on gaining a lot of knowledge about God. Then there comes a time when you have to put it in the proper compartments to have it make sense on a daily basis and allow the Word to work for you. Now, I want you to, want you to stay with the thought process, right? We talked about long spirit, which is small s. And when we talked about long spirit, it's talking about you, that part of you created in the image and likeness of God. So, with being patient, you have to stay long you. Okay? <laughs> we want to understand how to stay long you. So, I want us to stay focused on this process because it's a biblical foundation that you have to have that's going to help you be able to stand there effectively so that you can become who God wants you to be through the process, understanding what the finished product is supposed to look like. Is everybody with me? So with that said, I want you to look at Romans chapter 14, through chapter 7, verses 14 to 24, because we're going to use this as a backdrop. Romans 7, 14 to 24. Romans chapter 7. Verses 14 through 24. Because this may only be exciting to me. <laughs> Are you hearing me? But it's been good. For we know that the law is spiritual. But I am of flesh, sold into bondage to sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For I am not practicing what I would like to do. But I am doing the very thing I hate. But if I do the very thing I do not want to do, I agree with the law, confessing that the law is good. So now, no longer am I the one doing it, but sin which dwells in me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For the willing is present in me, but the doing of the good is not. For the good that I want, I do not do. But I practice the very evil that I do not want. But if I am doing the very thing I do not want, I am no longer the one doing it. But sin which dwells in me, I find in the principle that evil is present in me, the one who wants to do good. See, this is where the separation between the human nature and the spirit take place, the real you. You notice he came down, he said, in the beginning he was saying, I'm not doing the thing that I want to do. Then he came down and said, but I realize that me, the one that wants to do good, I'm not the one that's doing evil. It's sin in my human nature. He came, and he brought us to that understanding, you are not your human nature. And if you're struggling with sin, it's because you are in the human nature. You got to see that because this is the place where patience starts. It talks about long spirited. So we see here, as you go to the next verse, he says, For I joyfully concur with the law of God in the inner man. But I see a different law in the members of my body waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin which is in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will set me free from the body of this death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, on the one hand, I myself with my mind am serving the law of God. But on the other hand, with my flesh, the law of sin. As you can see from these scriptures, the spirit man, the real you, does not do wrong, has never done wrong. you got to grasp that thought. 
Why? Because he's created in the image and likeness of God. But what's been going on all my life is through this process that he was rendered powerless through separation from God and held prisoner to the desires of the human nature. When Adam sinned, when Adam sinned, he lost control over his mind and his body. The real Adam, the spirit Adam, I can see it. The real Adam lost control of his body. You gotta get that. The real spirit man became a prisoner. He became dormant, held prisoner to the human nature and his desires, allowing Satan to program and train the mind to fulfill the desires of the human nature. Long spirit. Long spirit. Patience. Enduring. Long suffering. Long you. As you encounter your walk each day, you must be long you. Spirit created in the image and likeness of God. That part that makes you like God. You got to get that. Because the mindset on the flesh is hostile to God. For it is, it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it's not even able to do so. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You see, when you get into your human nature, when you get into your emotions, it's impossible to please God. It's impossible to hear God. Long-spirited. If you become short-spirited, you stop hearing God. You stop being able to obey God because you can only obey, obey God in the spirit man, the real you. You are not your mind. You are not your flesh. You are not your desires. That's what we have to come to understand. And he talks about being patient. Love is patient. And what he's basically saying is the real you is patient. That's who you are. You're patient. You, you suffer whatever comes against you that will try to prevent you from honoring God by showing unconditional love to God and unconditional love to mankind because this all started from the gifts and being able to serve the members in the body, right? And we're constantly trying to serve each other in the body, right? Trying to be a blessing. But a lot of times we're doing it out of the human nature because there's things that rise up that make us stop being Long spirit, we get into the flesh because our human nature needs something. And it doesn't get it. It requires things of people that they are not able to do. And you have to understand that your mind has to be reprogrammed to come forth in doing these things. Therefore, long spirit means to stand firm in your identity, which is love, with fortitude, Calm, without complaint, anger, or anything like it. Against the schemes of the devil, the rulers, the powers, the world forces of this dark of this darkness, and against the spiritual forces of weakness in the heavenly places, as they shoot their fiery arrows of annoyance, misfortune, delay, hardships, pain. And the list goes on. You hear what I just said? Long spirited means that you stay in the spirit as the enemy shoots his fiery dots. Because what is the lot of things when you're waiting is you get annoyed, don't you? You get mistreated, don't you? All of these things are the fiery arrows of the enemy that he's shooting at you to make you come short. To allow the flesh to step in and start acting on your behalf. That's why he says stay long spirit. Stay in you. Stay in your true identity. You are spirit created in the image and likeness of God. And he's now explaining to you who you are and what that looks like. It starts off with you. You got to stay you. You have to stay true who God created you to be, not to what you became after the fall. And so many times we are responding according to what has happened to us after the fall. This is possible because mankind was created in the image and likeness of God. 
free from sin with a rational nature. Intelligence and a free will to choose give us a moral responsibility to God, who created it. See, in his image means, in your reasoning, in your intellect, your will, and your emotions, you are like God in your thinking and the way you talk. So in his likeness means that you are created with the ability to represent God's character so that when you see man or when you are seen, you are supposed to be a reflection of God. That means you have trained your mind to use your body to represent God through his actions. We're talking about being long-spirited. We're talking about the things that we have to do to make sure we are staying long spirit, we are being patient. Patient is not just quietly waiting for something happening. Being patient, being long spirited is your time of growth. It's your time of taking authority. As you have gained the knowledge about God, you are now starting to learn how to apply that knowledge when you come into situations and circumstances these days. See, this is what Jesus came to position mankind to restore through faith in what he accomplished through his death, burial, and resurrection. Therefore, as a born-again believer, you want to enjoy God and all that he created. You must understand and constantly remind yourself that you are spirit created in the image and likeness of God. You must see your mind as a tool that must be programmed. It is the only it is only then that you will be able to present yourselves to God as those alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness. Now we're talking about long spirit, we're talking about patience. This is how you are able to reprogram your mind in your true identity. See, once you train your mind in this true identity, it will now leave the body to perform actions and behavior that make you look like God. That make, make it look like you have been delivered from the dead, that you are born again, that you are a new creation. Patience. This was astronomical for me because it was like, okay, I just quietly wait on God. But not, you know, and we have all the information, don't get me wrong, we have all this information, but we're trying to compartmentalize and put it in the right places so that we can have an effective result of all the circumstances and situations we find ourselves in and understand why they're happening. See, once you understand why your day is unfolding the way it is and what's supposed to be taking place at this time, you can then, you can then with an informed mind, know how to approach it and what mindset you need to tackle it. And that's what's missing a lot because the question's always been there from time. Am I following God now? Is this decision a decision that God wants me to make? <coughs> and my hope is that after the day, you will be sure and certain that it is because you will know how to actually uh, perceive whatever it is you find yourself dealing with. See, it all starts here. It is here that you and the Holy Spirit connect <coughs> as individuals. When you come to these places, your encounters. This is where you connect with the Holy Spirit. Not as this thing or something, but as an individual, you and the Holy Spirit connect. Keep in mind that at this place, your mind used to connect with your spirit and try to state this case while it's okay to be thinking and doing things the way you were doing and believe the way you believe. And we all have our different phases that we go, but that's the enemy, that's the human nature trying to program you and not staying long-spirited to stay with God so you can hear Him during these times. And that's what we must understand. When you and the Holy Spirit are coming together, when y'all connected, you all are actually coming together with a game plan. Because you have recognized where your mind is. And it's the Holy Spirit's job to actually show you how to deal with your mind. How to reprogram it how to teach it in the things that we know we're supposed to do to stay in the character which we God created. See, it's at this point you realize that the Holy Spirit is to you what God was to Adam. As he walked with 
Adam each day in the garden. God was teaching Adam his ways. As you walk through your walk each day, the Holy Spirit is walking with you, teaching you the ways of God. But when the Spirit, the, when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all the truth. For He will not speak of His own initiative. But whatever he hears, he will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of mine and will disclose it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he takes of mine and will disclose it to you. You got to see this. You're talking about being long spirit. That means you're coming into your situation. This is where you and the Holy Spirit connect. You definitely connect there, but you're supposed to be connected all the time. But when you come into these situations, you and the Holy Spirit connect and you analyze the situation of your mind. Not you and your mind, not your mind analyzing itself, which has usually been the case, but it's the spirit man who's now free and is taking more and more control over the mind to have more and more control over the body. He's now taking the information that he's been learning and he's now sharing that with the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit ministers to him. He starts to teach him of all the information he's learned, how to apply it in this particular situation, and what frame of thought he has to have to have a solid foundation to actually deal with the situation effectively and productively. Very important that we understand this because this is our spiritual growth and development. It's at this place where it says, He will glorify me, for He will take of mine and will disclose it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that He takes of mine and will disclose it to you. When does He disclose it to you? In your decision making. In your responding to life as it unfolds each day. <coughs> so many times we're depending on our human knowledge and understanding to try to deal with a spiritual situation. That's why you end up with conflict. Either it's going to be with yourself or with some other person. There's no way the spirit conflicts with itself. And that's what you have to understand. Whenever there's a conflict, someone is not getting what they want. That's human nature. That's not God. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. But it was, it was to us that God revealed these things by His Spirit, long Spirit, Holy Spirit, working with your Spirit, as He reveals the things of God to you. For His Spirit searches out everything and shows us God's <coughs> secrets. No one can know a person's thought except that person's own Spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own Spirit. Holy Spirit, working with your spirit, creating the image and likeness of God to tell you and share with you the thoughts of God, how God thinks, how He does things, which shows you how to deal with the situation that you're in. And we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit, so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. See, now that I know that I am not to be active <coughs> during the course of being patient, I understand now that it is here that the Holy Spirit will train me in the condition of love for God and mankind. As I am, as I am. You already knew all this. But as you being led by the Holy Spirit, as I said earlier, to put it in its proper place so you get the proper understanding, so you can have the proper mindset and be certain that you are following God's will we in the situation that you find yourself in. It is here that the Holy Spirit will train us. You will learn how to approach your mind in a more productive, effective way in your efforts to reprogram it because it is so tied into the carnal emotions and desires. This is why Scripture teaches us, prepare your minds for action. Here it is again, keep sober in spirit. Keep sober in spirit so that you will be able to stand with fortitude and calm without complaint, anger, or the like against the schemes of the devil, the rulers, powers, the world forces of this darkness, and against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places as they shoot their fiery arrows of annoyance, 
misfortune, this delay, hardship, pain, etc. In order to reestablish through faith, in order to make us misrepresent God in whose image and likeness we are created. You get that stuff, get that thought? See, we worried about putting on the full armor of God so you'll be able to withstand. But where do you stand at? When do you stand like that? When I was being patient, I thought I'd just be sitting there waiting for God to do what he's going to do. Don't we often say one of the challenges things in serving God is waiting on him? Mm -hmm. You know why we keep going through waiting? We haven't learned a lesson of what's supposed to be happening and waiting and what waiting really is. Mm -hmm. He's telling you to stay true to your identity, to look like God, to sound like God. As we go through our walk each day, this is how the manifold wisdom of God is to be made known through the church, to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. Therefore, if you have been raised up to Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on the earth. So you have to prepare, you have to retrain. Therefore, if you've been raised with Christ, you're supposed to keep your mind on the things above. So as I am now taking control of my mind, I'm programming it in the things of heaven, the things of the kingdom. What do you mean, Pastor? I know from the word that when Jesus came, he came to undo everything that Satan did. So because of that, I understand that whatever it was before Satan messed it up, that's where I'm supposed to be now. So now, as I study about the kingdom of God, this is what I start programming my mind in. If it's not in heaven, we don't have to receive it. If it didn't come from God, we don't have to receive it. We have the authority now to command it to leave and go in and repossess that place. So as I prepare him for what he's capable of doing, he's no longer fearful of any situation that he finds himself in encountering. He know why he's there. He know he's there to repossess something. And we're just walking in the victory that he has already accomplished for, for us. So this is what being patient looks like. See, at, it's at this stage right here. You know how you used to look at people and look at them like, man, you got some issues. Now that you understand what long spirit it is, now you observe your mind and watch your behavior like you used to watch others. Now you and the Holy Spirit talk about what you see. Now for me and the Holy Spirit, now we observe this thing up here. Man. It is an awesome thing to look at. When you just step away from it and watch. Yes. 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 It is here that the Holy Spirit will show you how to apply the knowledge that you have acquired as a way of escape which God has prepared for you because no temptation has overtaken you but such as is common to man and God is faithful. We will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will provide the way of escape also so that you will be able to endure it. That is why I made mention of the Bible study Thursday night when I said all you need to know is what you already know. See, because the Lord is not going to test you beyond what you know. So by being able to stay long-spirited, it's not about what else do I need to learn, how do I apply what I already know, and because we don't understand the patience like we need to, we don't realize that we're supposed to be pulling the information that we've already uh, learned and put it at this proper situation. And see, this is the wisdom of God. Because it's first pure. It's not after anything. It is peaceable. It's gentle. Reasonable. Be reasonable, Curtis. Too much. Come on. Be reasonable. Just, just get it going. It is full of mercy and good fruit. Unwavering without hypocrisy. And the seed whose fruit is righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Because blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. See, when you're being long spirited, you know, we are, we are off the backdrop of the gifts and how to minister to each other, right? But everything you got you do must lead to peace. You must know how to minister in unconditional love. It can't, it can't be about sin. Why? Because the sin debt has been paid, right? God is not holding people's sins against them, so we have to know how to operate in the wisdom of God. 
See, the Holy Spirit will show you how to operate in wisdom. He showed me how to operate in wisdom. That was the first time I ever done something like that. I don't know when I've done something like that before. You're going to do seven if you don't do nothing else. Shouldn't have been laid off. You ain't going backwards. See, the mind tells you you're going backwards. I wanted to ride to see I hadn't lost much. And at the end, it was really a challenge to not to do only two. But to see what was on the table was, can you just follow the Holy Spirit's instructions? Trust His counsel. Even though your mind is telling you that's worthless. Trust Him. Because you're going to learn, you need to learn how to follow when you don't understand. See, this knowledge requires a deeper understanding to know what minds that I need to approach the assaults of the enemy. That he will bring my way each day and challenging me for my love for God and for mankind. See, I have to know this. Because everything that you do really is about relationships. All your challenges in life has to do with a relationship. Either your relationship with God, your relationship with others, or your relationship with yourself. Mind, body, and spirit is not on the same page. Anybody got any internal turmoil going on? You look good on the outside, but the silent screams on the inside say, Lord, help me. See, that's not PC. The Holy Spirit's job is first to make sure you're at peace, that you're in control, that you understand and know all that's going on with you. So what is the mindset that I need to approach these challenges with, that I'm going to encounter these things? Jesus of James 1, 2, 2, 7. Consider it all joy, my brothers, when you encounter annoyances, misfortunes, delays, hardships, pain, and various trials when trying to demonstrate your love for God and mankind, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. So, I must tackle every situation with joy. Why? Because I know whatever it is I'm encountering, whatever is challenging me from being long-spirited, I know that if I stay long-spirited, I'm going to want to come out complete, lacking nothing. I mean, having everything that you need. Everything that you need. That's what the challenges are for. That's what patience is about. That is the foundation to be able to be and express who God created you to be. To be able to stay in your true identity, spirit, created in the image and likeness of God. Able to think like God, able to talk like God, and able to walk like God. That's who you are. You have to now convince your mind and train your mind in that understanding. So that when you evaluate, now that you, once you do that, you can step away from your mind and what it's doing and see, is that the way God thinks? Is that the way God does things? He said, but if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to you. But you must ask in faith without any doubting, for the one who doubts was like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For well, that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, being a double-minded and unstable in all his ways. Staying long-spirited, when you start to doubt, Short spirit. Guess what? Nothing you see. Can't get nothing from God if you doubt. That's why you have to know definitely what's going on with you. You have to be able to separate you from your mind to analyze what's going on up there. You got to do that. Don't let what's going on here convince you this is what should be happening. You say, look, does that matter with the Word of God? No. Short spirited, you're headed for trouble because where are you? You're in the flesh. You can have a good reason. They just slap your child. Now, who in their right mind not going to slap them back? Everybody that's in their right mind will not slap them back. In your right mind. See, that's a deep one, isn't it? But do you believe God a little more than you? God said, if anyone causes one of my children to stumble, especially put a millstone around their neck and throw them over into the sea, right? See, the human nature wants to see some action now. Right? That's his downfall. He's got to see. 
I just know. You mess with me outside of God's training, you have some serious trouble. And because I'm unconditional love, I try my best to warn you not to do that. Please, look, don't do that. I mean, you know, I understand what you say. I understand you're having a problem with me. Please, look, don't, don't, don't take it that far. Because you know my dad, he's jealous. He don't play that. You start to have that kind of mindset and you'll start to avoid people that might take go to those places because you don't want them to put themselves in that type of situation. You just go on leave us. So I don't want you to say something or do something that I know that is going to require you to pay. But the flesh be like, no, wait, I want to see that again. So next time they see me, they'll be reminded. You don't miss with God's children. Come and beg me heart. Give me homage. And respect now. See, that's what the flesh means. Yes. That's short spirit. You're not in the spirit. These are the things you must overcome to act like God. What's the proper motivation? This is the confidence we have before God. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, and whatever we ask, we know that we have the request which we have asked for some kids. It is God's will that you stay long spirit. What do you mean? That means to stay self-controlled. To learn how to control your own body. To abstain from immorality. To learn how to control your body in righteousness. Anything that I need for God to stay in my true identity, if I ask Him for it, guess what? Guaranteed to give it. Ain't a thought about it. That's if you stay in the spirit, you'll understand that. And you'll believe that. So what's the assurance? As we said, it is God's will that you be self-controlled. We're talking about staying long spirit, which means staying self-controlled. Staying in your true identity. For God has not called us to impurity, but in sanctification. So if you reject this, you're not rejecting a man, but you're rejecting God. You have to really decide what you believe and what you want to do about it. It's about the love for the brethren, the love for mankind. I don't know what this finds you at. I don't think it really finds you thinking. Did, it, did the point I was trying to get across, did it come across clear? Did anybody understand the concept of being long spirit? Did you understand the scriptures that was with it? to develop the mindset, to give you the assurance of why this is important, so that you know how to now embrace and tackle every situation that you encounter, that you understand is you have to separate your mind from your spirit man, so that you and the Holy Spirit can do the analysis. And understand that because of man's separation from God, even though your spirit created in the image and likeness of God, because of that separation, the real you has so much catching up to do. Even though you are operating in the spirit of true identity, uh, you're going to struggle with the knowledge that you have too. That's why you need to have that conversation with the Holy Spirit, because He's going to counsel you in your knowledge. As you have the Word of God, trying to operate in it. Remember, you know, the spirit man, you know, he's behind. He's now free. And he's absorbing all the word of God he can. And he's ready to go to work for God. But he hasn't come into the real wisdom and knowledge of God that he needs to apply what he has effectively so he can use his mind and his body in an effective way so they can work in harmony together. He has a tendency to be overbearing when it comes to the mind, when it comes to the body. He doesn't want to accept their shortcomings and their failures. And he tries to push, push them beyond their limits and they rebel against him. You have your mind rebelling against you with some things that your spirit man has told you need to do. And you try to make your body do it. But you have a program of mind, and when you make it do it, it'll do it, but it'll be kicking rocks all the way. Yeah, you know, you know, this, 
That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Next thing you know, they just get to a place where they just shut down on you. And you, be, and you spirit be watching. Like, you know we're supposed to be up doing this. You know we said we're going to do this. It's right there. I know. But guess what? I am not doing it now. And the body is like, that's right. I don't know who you think you are coming in here going to make us do something. We don't, look, we fine. You go, you go do it yourself. See what you see how you work out. What you gonna work with? You ain't working with us. That's what happens. That's what makes us not able to carry out our, goal, our spiritual goals and objectives because we become overbearing to the mind and the flesh. Don't realize it was our responsibility to make sure they were prepared. It's your responsibility to make sure your mind and your body is prepared. Whatever it is, you're trying to get it to do. And it's nothing like having a willing vessel or a willing participant. I want you to think about that thought, and I want you to analyze. The real you has been putting out New Year's resolutions, been putting out plans, goals, and objectives. But when did you sit down with the Holy Spirit and work out a game plan for how to present this to your mind and your body? Because he'll give you wisdom on how to do it. He'll tell you what they need. <coughs> he'll tell you how they operate. And he'll show you how to approach it. That's the problem. You don't consider them because you think you're the boss. And they're constantly showing you, you're the boss. But you have to work by yourself. And that's what's happening. We're going to listen to some music. I want you to really think about the spirit.